Hello. Today we're going to walk through the process of how to order a VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost. My name is Larry Henderson, Product Manager for VMware Cloud on AWS at VMware. Before we get started, this assumes the customer has already been working with VMware or AWS sales to purchase a solution and that the customer has had a series of workshops with either VMware Solutions Architects or Solutions Engineers or AWS VMC related solutions architects or specialists. A couple basic requirements for ordering. A VMware Cloud account slash org, a general understanding of the solution, desired instance amount or configuration, an understanding of or can speak to the facility requirements, cooling requirements, power requirements, and networking requirements. And lastly, a customer AWS account. So let's get started. The ability to order a VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost is available to new and existing VMware Cloud on AWS customers. For our example today, we are walking through the process as a new customer. The start point today is a customer who just received their welcome to VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost email. <clears throat> From here, we will click the Join VMware Cloud Services link. This will take us to the VMware Cloud Services console, where we will follow the standardized process as a first timer to the Cloud Services console by creating an account, populating the necessary information, including identity and payment. From there, we will be taken to the VMware Cloud landing page, where we'll click to expand the VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost tab. There's a choice to order now or learn more, which will provide a brief overview of the solution. Taking the learn more path, the next step will be to click order a VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost. From here, we will walk through the steps required to successfully complete an order. As stated in the beginning, there are specific requirements for the solution. Step one. Provide a name for your VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost. Step two, connect to your AWS account. This also follows the standard VMware Cloud on AWS account linking process, where as a new customer, you will click the open AWS console with CloudFormation template link, sign into your account, choose the region where you plan to deploy your VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost and run the CloudFormation template. Once completed, your account will be linked and the VMware Cloud console will show the following. Step three, region availability zone. Select the region availability zone where your VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost will be connected. Note, the connection must be to a VMware Cloud on AWS supported region as it will be shown in the dropdown during your order. However, if your location is in a country slash region where VMware Cloud is not supported, please consult your VMware or AWS representative as supportability may be available as long as there's a connection back to a VMware Cloud supported region. For today, we're gonna be choosing US East Ohio as our region and US East 2A as our availability zone. Step four, establish a VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost site. Shown here is the option to create a new site or for existing customers who already have a VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost site created, the ability to select that site for ordering purposes. The site information will cover the requirements associated with the site name, site address, facilities, power, and networking. We will walk through each of the required selections. First, we will enter a site name and site description and populate the site address. Next are the facility condition requirements. Does your site meet the requirements as shown here? The specific temperature and humidity range and airflow requirements. If so, select yes and continue. Facility clearance requirements. Loading dock accommodation of 94 inches high, 
54 inches wide and 48 inches deep with the ability to provide a clear access path to the, fi the rack's final rack position. If your site doesn't meet these requirements, select yes and continue. Next we have the rack position requirements. Max weight. Each site is different. Provide the max weight your site can support. Shown here as a selection of 2,000 plus pounds, there's also a drop down for lesser weight. Bracing requirements. Does your site have bracing requirements? If so, specify here. If there are no requirements, select no. Installation equipment. During the delivery of your VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost Rack, will AWS be able to bring installation and equipment into the site, i.e. an AWS owned laptop? If so, select yes. If no, select no. Moving on to power information. Power draw. How much primary power will be available at the rack's position? The supported options for VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost are 5, 10, or 15 kVA, depending on your selected host count. If there is a question on the power draw of your selection, please consult your VMware AWS representative to ensure you select the correct power draw. For today's order, we are choosing 15 kVA. Upstream breaker. Do you have a 30 or 32 amp breaker at this position? Specify yes or no. Power option. Will you provide single or three phase power at this position? For today's order, we will be selecting three phase power. Power connector. To connect the VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost to your power source, what power connections will best suffice for you? When ordering, there are options in the drop down. For today's order, we will be choosing red 32 amp three phase connectors as shown here. Power feed drop. At the position, Will the power come from above or below the rack? We will be selecting above the rack. Last for power, redundancy at the position. Will there be redundant power connections? We are selecting yes for today's order. Note, for more information on power requirements for VMware Cloud on AWS Outposts can be found online at both AWS and VMware. If there are questions, please consult your VMware or AWS representative. And last for the site requirements, networking for installation. Uplink speed. As seen here, there are the options of 1, 10, 40, or 100 gig uplinks. As shown, we are selecting 10 gig for today's order. Number of uplinks. There are two devices or top rack switches per rack. How many would you use to connect to your network? Our selection is two, meaning a total of four per rack. Fiber type and optical standard. The rack supports single mode or multi-mode fiber. Depending on the choice, we'll define the optical standard. Different selections are available in the dropdown. For today's order, we are choosing multi-mode fiber and 10G base SR for optical standard. Network redundancy. Will you be providing redundant devices, allowing for both devices and the, uh, the VMT on AWS Outpost Rack to connect to? In our order today, we'll be selecting yes. Next is capacity. Here you will choose the host count based on your plan purchase for VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost. As shown here, we are selecting a total of six instances. The summary includes the instance type of i3N metal with the number of hosts being six and the total capacity. Next, Outpost Connectivity. This speaks to the requirement of connecting the VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost back to a VMware Cloud available region. Natively, an Outpost uses what's called a service link to connect back to a region. The options for that connectivity are by default over the internet, which a customer provides internet access and the outpost calls home to AWS. The other option is over direct connect using private VIF or public VIF. The selection here is to choose private connectivity, meaning the service link will communicate over AWS direct connect via private VIF. 
When selecting this, specific information must be provided. Note, different than native AWS Outposts, the private connectivity VPC must be associated with the VMware Shadow account. With that said, a customer will still have to do the standard Direct Connect setup and private VIF creation in their AWS account and share the private VIF with the VMware Shadow account. For more details on this, please consult your VMware or AWS representative. When making a selection, we show what's required here. A private connectivity CIDR. This is a minimum of a slash 25, but we recommend a slash 24 for the purpose of growth. A VGW ASN. This should be specified by the customer. A private VIF ID. The customer must create the private VIF in their account. The associated ID needs to be provided here. Again, for more details, please consult your VMware or AWS representative. For today's purposes, we are not selecting private connectivity. Payment term. VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost payment options are only three year upfront. Specific details about this can be discussed with your VMware or AWS sales representative. For the purpose of this section, there is nothing to be selected here. Click next. The last step before order submission, review and acknowledgement. Shown here is a general order summary. The name of the outpost, your AWS account number, the selected region and availability zone, the associated site, host capacity, the connectivity choice, and lastly, the payment term. Note, the numbers shown here do not represent the actual cost of the solution. Before submitting the order, acknowledgement that the term charges start only after the successful deployment of the first SDDC on the VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost Rack. Pricing is based on the subscription period and finally, the approximate delivery time frame. Note, the delivery time frame is just that, approximate. Please work with your VMware or AWS representative on actual delivery time frames and dates. The last thing to do here is submit your order. After submitting the order, you'll receive an email confirming the order and a list of important next steps that include the following. AWS will be contacting you to set up a time and date for the site survey. You will receive an email with a form for the purpose of logical networking. Please fill this out as soon as possible. Note, the information will be covered as part of the workshops and should not come as a surprise. If there are any questions on what's required, please contact your VMware AWS representative. It will also let you know that you can track the status of your order in the VMware Cloud Console as shown here. This concludes the order process for VMware Cloud on AWS Outpost. Thank you.